welcome to another video i am the starman and it's been a while since i put a video out on this channel and uh, actually it's not the best time of the year middle of summer and um, we've had some pretty dodgy weather lately as well but anyway we're now into august and the dark skies are returning to the northern hemisphere and this week we have the peak of the perseid meteor shower which is probably the best meteor shower of the whole year you know, the first ever proper meteor shower I ever saw was the Perseid meteor shower. And it was on a star party with my club. And it was absolutely amazing. We had really clear skies. We were up at Morecambe Bay, a little bit further up from Blackpool where I am now, looking over Morecambe Bay. It was a brilliant dark sky. Away from Blackpool, we were looking away from the lights of Blackpool. And uh, I saw these things flying across the sky. And uh, it was, I was I was like a kid in a sweet shop, you know, when I saw these things fizzle across the sky it was absolutely amazing yeah so the Perseid meteor shower peaks this week on the night of the 12th which is a Thursday into the morning of the 13th it's a very sharp peak now they do actually last for about a month so you might have seen some already if you've been out I haven't seen any but I've not been looking but they do have a very sharp peak on the night of the 12th into the morning of the 13th now they're probably about on a par with the Geminids I'll say in fact the Geminids might be slightly better the Geminids in in December because they move across the sky slightly slower the Geminids but apart from that there's not a whole lot between them and the good advantage with the Perseids is that we get to see them in the summer when it's fairly comfortable to watch them in the winter you don't really want to be stood outside too long because it's pretty cold and that's something against the Geminis. But anyway, I am going to tell you in this video all about the Perseids, how you can get to see them, and also how you might be able to catch one on camera. Now, these meteor showers, such as the Perseids, which is coming up this week, are actually caused by the Earth. As the Earth goes around the sun, it passes into the tails of comets and asteroids. In, in, this, in the case of the Perseids, there's a comet called Swift Tuttle which went around the sun and, and back again and when the earth moves into the path of this comet Swift Tuttle like it does regularly every year in its orbit um, this is how you get the meteors because when the earth moves into the path into the tail the tail the dust tail that's left over by the comet that's how you get these meteors flying through the air and most of them are tiny 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 specks specks of sand and the the like little specks of sand that you get on the beach and they fly across the sky really quickly and some of them you really have to you, you blink and you'll miss some of them you know but what what you really want to see is you want to see those slow ones those those ones are a little bit bigger more more like a tiny stone and those move quite a bit slower across the, the sky and uh, they can make quite a long trail across the sky they're called fireballs because they really light up the sky and those are the spectacular ones to look out for now the thumbnail to this video was neither a Perseid nor Geminid or any of the known meteor showers it was simply a random fireball meteor which flew across the sky when I was down in Wales and I was setting a photograph up I was stood there stunned as the sky lit up green um, yeah that's what you can see when you go out now the most important thing about meteor showers is you do need if you want to go and see them or photograph them it, you really need to go somewhere dark you want to get away from light pollution get away from um, if you're in an urban area you want to go out to uh, as far away from lights as you can and you also want to let your eyes adapt to the sky as well and don't be looking at your phone don't be shining torches and that will really help you to see more meteors anyway i'll talk about that a bit more but now i'm going to show you a couple of cameras that i've got and they're very very different and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to set the cameras up to give yourself a great chance of capturing a perseid meteor and once you find out the settings for the perseid meteor you can then adapt those to other meteors or even the random ones like I say the the thumbnail to this video was a completely random meteor I was just so lucky to be able to capture it and to see it because it was absolutely amazing so let's have a look at the cameras now and I'll show you the settings that you need to use 
to give yourself a great chance of capturing a meteor on camera. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a couple of cameras here. And uh, this camera on the left here is my Nikon D850. It's a full frame camera. And the lens I have on here is a 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that out of the way and I'm going to talk about this camera here, which is a Canon 1200D. Now, most of you will probably have a, can a camera, sorry, similar to this one. It is an APS-C. In this case, it's a Canon APS-C. So what it is, if I just bring this one back into it, is the sensor on this camera is a 1.6 times crop. So the focal length of the lens is times by 1.6 on this camera compared to this one, which is normal 35 millimeter. Um, it's a little bit confusing. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about it as we go along. But yeah, this camera here, like I said, it's very different. It's a bit more sort of prosumer kind of camera compared to the professional one I have over there. And this one has a kit lens on it. You see, it's got an 18 to 55 millimeter lens there. Can you see? And what you want to do is if you want to photograph meteors you want to have the lens as wide as it'll go and can you see this lens here also has numbers on the front here so it has 18 to 55 and it also has these numbers here 35 to 5.6 now what that means is your aperture that's your little iris thing that closes down in in the in the lens um, and the widest aperture that it goes to is down to f3.5 and that would mean you've got your aperture wide open, you've, you've opened the iris wide open. Um, it only goes down to f5.6 without doing anything if you zoom in. So if you zoom in, even if you don't touch the aperture, it goes down to f5.6 because this is a kit lens and it has a variable aperture. So what we want to do is we want to use 18 millimeter and we want to use f3.5. So the way we do that is we, we turn the camera on and hopefully the screen will come on. Right, I hope you can see this okay. We're looking at the back of the camera now, the Canon 1200D, and can you see these numbers on the back here? We've got manual mode, I've got it in manual mode. 1 60th of a second, shutter speed, F18, ISO 100. We need to change all of these if we're gonna have a chance of capturing Perseid meteors, we need to use a longer shutter speed, 1 60th of a second is going to be no good, and we need to knock this number all the way down as low as it will go, and we also want to use a much higher ISO than ISO 100, so let's do that now, so what I'll do is if I hold this, if what we'll do is we'll do the shutter speed first, can you see how the shutter speed is changing, we want to take that down to I would say about let's say let's say about 15 seconds shall we right so now that we've got the shutter speed to 15 seconds we then want to change the aperture here we want that to go down as low as it'll go as low as the lens will allow us and on this lens that is f3.5 can you see there it's now got f3.5 there so now what we need to do is we need to change the iso so if i hold the iso button and I put that now onto, I'll put it onto 3200. Can you see there? 3200. Yeah, so these are the settings that you really need to have if you want to have to capture these Perseid meteors. We need to be using manual, I would say. 15 second exposure, roughly, give or take. Now that might depend on the lens. I'll talk about that in a minute. F3.5 or as low as you can get this with, your, with whatever lens you're using. If you can go lower, that's better and an ISO of 3200 because the meteors they do move very fast through the sky and if you're not using a very high sensitivity like ISO 3200 you might not pick them up on your camera you might see a meteor fly across the sky and you might think oh I just saw something fly across the sky then you have a look at your, your, your picture and you might just be able to see a very faint line and if it moves really really fast it might not register on your camera unless you're using a high and that's where your ISO comes in because your ISO if it's high like this you've got a better chance of catching something now just taking a look at the front of the, the lens can you see this is an 18 millimeter lens but it's on a crop sensor camera so this will effectively work as something like a 28 millimeter so the focal length of this lens is going to be like more like a 28 millimeter on this camera so you need to factor that into your photographs if you don't want your stars to be trailing if you don't want trailing stars 
you need to kind of keep your shutter speed down to something like I would say 15 seconds you don't want to go too much more than 15 seconds on this camera you want to use a 500 rule now how many times does 28 go into 500 okay so 18 goes into 500 around about 18 times so this would mean that you can use a shutter speed of maybe up to 20 seconds i always use always use a little bit less so i would probably tend to go for 15 but if you use 20 it doesn't matter in fact if you even use up to 30 it's not going to be a disaster it just means that you're probably not going to have pinpoints of light you know your stars they're probably going to have trails at, if you use that speed so you can actually get away with using up to 30 seconds it's just that you don't expect to have points of light coming from your stars you know they're going to have little trails so that's just something that you need to think about when you're taking your photograph of the meteors so another thing as well which is a little bit difficult with this lens i can't really tell you how to photograph how to put this lens to infinity but what you need to do is you also need to focus your lens on the stars now i have got a video i'll probably do a link to a video where i show you how to focus on stars manually i have this set to manually now you see where i can rotate this lens now to manually now it's usually at infinity when it's closest to the body there so i would say that would be close there's no infinity mark on this lens which is very unfortunate which means we can't roughly focus the lens so we kind of have to do it when we're out in the field we have to focus on a star and that's how we get our focus and then we can start hopefully capturing meteors once you've got the camera set up you then want to use one of these things this is actually from the other camera but it's very similar you'll plug this in somewhere on the camera and what you would normally do what would be best to do is to set your camera to a frame rate that will advance automatically so you don't want it on single frame you want to make sure that your camera can you see here this symbol here means that this camera is set to multiple frame rate which means if you plug one of these in and then lock this can you see that if you lock that down there the camera will keep taking photographs for however long you've had the exposure set so it's, if you set it to 20 seconds it will take a photograph for 20 seconds and it stop and then it will take another one and it'll carry on taking photographs until the battery runs out or until you run out of memory on your card so there you go that was my way that i would set up this particular camera here which is a canon 1200d and i'm just going to move that one out of the way now and i'm going to bring this one back in again which is my main camera the nikon d850 and you'll notice that this has got quite a more substantial lens on it this particular lens is a nikon 20 millimeter f 1.8 and what that means is can you see that the number f1.8 is lower than the number on this one which it says there it's variable f3.5 that goes down to f3.5 this is a a prime lens and the widest aperture well i said the widest aperture is f1.8 which is very very fast actually so this lets a whole bunch more light in than that one there on the canon so this means that I can get away with taking a similar kind of exposure to the other camera using this lens wide open at f1.8 and I wouldn't need to use such a high ISO. I could probably get away with using something like 800 on this camera whereas on the other one I'm using ISO 3200 because this lens lets so much more light in with that fast aperture of f1.8. And another thing about this lens as well is I can focus manually with this lens can you see there there should be an infinity mark there and if i put that lens to the infinity mark can you see if i put that marker there across there that means that this lens is pretty much in focus so that i can start taking photographs of meteors it's not the way i would normally do it i would normally do it by focusing on the star but this would get you pretty close and uh, unfortunately the other camera doesn't have that so you have to kind of focus when you're out and and hopefully you'll get it right but yeah so it's quite a bit different this one i'll put the screen on so we can see the screen so as you can see the the settings wrong what what mode are we in we're in manual yeah so you can see we've got 160th second so we want to get that down and in on this camera i can go down to i can go down to 30 seconds 
with this using this lens I can quite easily use a shutter speed of 30 seconds and I will get minimal trailing what I can do is I can get away with using 30 seconds I mean ideally probably 25 just to be on the safe side so if I go to 25 that would be ideal can you see the aperture there is wrong it's at f4 so i need to knock that down and i do that by using the sub command dial here on the front so i'll knock that down as far as it'll go keep going down f1.8 and now we've got 25 seconds exposure that's quite long at f1.8 the widest it'll go now we just need to move the iso so i'll, I'll hold the iso button down and i'll move the iso until it goes up to well, like I say, on this camera, I can get away with using a lower ISO because I've got much more light coming in. But let's say that I'll go to 1600 and it'll just mean that I've got a better chance of capturing more meteors, more of the fainter ones. And 1600 will be pretty low noise as well on this particular camera. So now I've got this camera set up here fairly similarly to the other one. I'm using a a 25 second long shutter speed the main difference is the aperture on this camera is much lower and it means it's letting a lot more light in which means i've got a better chance of capturing more meteors with this camera not only that but the lens is wider as well this lens is much much wider 20 millimeters compared to 28 is quite a big difference believe it or not it is quite a big difference this will capture much more sky this lens and it'll also let more light in so there you go that's the way that i would set this camera up to capture meteors 25 seconds f1.8 iso 1600 and also i've got the lens set to infinity and now all we need to do is stick it on the tripod and hope that we get nice dark clear skies so we can capture meteors so there you go i've just shown you how to set up two very different cameras there for photographing meteors i've now got my d850 on the tripod here all set up and i'm now hoping that we're going to get clear skies on the night of the 12th into the morning of the 13th now you're more likely to see the meteors in the morning when the radiant is higher now the the meteors come from the direction of the sky in the northeast which is going to be the northeast early on the direction of the constellation of perseus now you can see the meteors anywhere in the sky but the way that you can tell a Perseid meteor is it has to come from that particular radiant, the constellation of Perseus, which is in the northeastern part of the sky early on, although that will change as the night goes on. It also makes a difference how high the radiant is up as well. If the radiant is higher, you've got a better chance of seeing them. Now, like I say, if you're looking towards the radiant, you can see just as many meteors, but you'll see shorter trails because you're kind of looking into the, the direction of where they're coming from. If you're looking away from the, meteor, the, the radiant, you're more likely to see longer trails. In fact, the best direction to look is around about 90 degrees away from the radiant, I would say. But if you're looking 180 degrees away, you'll still see meteors. In fact, you might see the longest trails of all because you're looking where the meteors are going rather than where they're coming from so um yeah that's just another tip as well in which direction to look for it's best not to look towards the radiant unless you're after a particular kind of photograph so now that you know those settings and how to set your camera up make sure you get a tripod take a trip out somewhere dark go to the park if you haven't if you can't go anywhere too far Go to the middle of the park try to get away from light pollution because if you're using those settings i was telling you about there and you're taking photographs over an urban area with light you might find that your photographs are going to be way too bright they're going to be way too bright so what you need to do is try and get somewhere far away from street lights light pollution as you can maybe the local golf course or something like that if you can get somewhere like that where it's really really dark and you can have a nice dark sky to give you a great chance of seeing and photographing Perseid meteors and hopefully I might do a video uh, on the night as well I might do a video of my own if we get lucky enough to get clear skies so anyway I hope you like the video if you do hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and I'll see you again next time